This film explains the installation of an inverter. It will guide you step-by-step -step through the mounting of an inverter in the Powador O2 range. It is absolutely necessary that you read the printed operating and installation instructions. The warnings and safety instructions which are provided in the operating instructions must be complied with entirely. Please note, the power door may only be installed by trained and authorized specialists. There are four steps to this installation. You can check the progress on this display. Preparation. You need the following for the installation. The inverter, complete with wall brackets, the fittings in the accompanying installation kit, and depending on the configuration of the system, an earthing kit may also be required. In addition, you will need the following materials and tools. A battery-operated screwdriver, complete with a bit for Phillips recess head screws, a hammer drill with six millimeter drilling head, a spirit level, and a pencil to mark drilling holes. When selecting an appropriate place for mounting, check the composition and condition of the wall and ensure good access to the unit. Maintain the following minimum clearances around the unit. 20 centimeters between inverters mounted side by side. 70 centimeters between inverters mounted above each other. 50 centimeters to the floor or ceiling, to shelves, cabinets, or similar. When arranging the inverters, please also ensure that the inverter displays will be clearly visible afterwards. The inverter heat sink may reach a temperature of up to 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, only mount the inverters on walls made from heat-resistant materials and ensure that air can circulate freely around the housing and through the heat sink on the rear side. Mounting. Using the spirit level, draw a horizontal line on the wall at eye level. Line up the wall brackets with it and mark the drilling holes. Drill the holes and place the fixings into the holes. Secure the wall bracket so that the cutout arrow in the mounting plate is pointing upwards. Secure the wall bracket using the four accompanying 70 millimeter screws. If necessary, depending on the composition and condition of the wall, use a different installation kit. Mount the inverter on the mounting bracket so that the pegs in the heat sink rest in the notches. Finally, lock the safety catch. To do this, slide the upper end of the catch towards the wall until the groove runs parallel to the wall. The electrical connection. The inverter connection is established via PCB terminals in the inverter's connection area. The door of the housing must be opened to do this. Temporarily remove the two Phillips recessed head screws on the right side of the door housing. Be sure to use cables with a sufficiently large cross section. This prevents excessive line impedance between the mains distribution board and the inverter. Excessive line impedance will lead to the inverter being switched off due to grid overvoltage. After that, the AC inverter lead is connected. Strip the lead of its insulation and guide it through the cable fitting. Connect the leads according to the labeling on the PCB terminal. Check that the leads are connected properly and firmly. Then tighten the cable seal of the cable fitting. Afterwards, the DC lead of the PV generator is connected. Ensure that the integrated DC disconnector is switched to the off position. Check the polarities with a measuring gauge. Secure the cable ends into the connection terminals. Pay attention to the PV plus and PV minus signs. Connecting to the wrong pole will damage the inverter. Tighten the cap of the cable fitting. Unused cable fittings must be closed off by using the protective caps which are included. Some module manufacturers, especially those of thin film modules, stipulate earthing on the generator side. An optional earthing kit for use on galvanically isolated power door inverters is available for this purpose. 
Use a screwdriver to remove the cover of the fuse holder and attach the fuse holder using the screws provided. Connect the black cable to the bottom DC terminal labeled GFDI. Attach the PE cable, green-yellow, to the corresponding PCB fitting using the cable shoe or, depending on the model, directly into the PE terminal on the PCB board. Clamp the enclosed cable bridge in the upper GFDI terminal and the DC plus or DC minus terminals, depending on whether positive or negative earthing is required. Earthing monitoring is to be activated after startup via the display. In order to facilitate communication between the inverter and the accessories, connect a two-core cable to the RS-485 interface terminal on the control card. Startup. Now the inverter is mechanically and electrically installed. The inverter can only be put into operation under daylight conditions when the solar generator is energized. Close the housing and secure the door with the two screws. Switch on the line voltage via the external circuit breakers. Afterwards, reconnect the solar generator via the DC disconnector. To switch to programming mode, hold down the right-hand button for approximately 20 seconds. Use the left-hand button to scroll through the various menu items. The menu is continuous. When you reach the end, the display automatically returns to the first item. Use the right-hand button to change the respective parameters. This menu is continuous too. During the initial startup, the appropriate country and language must be selected. The top LED diode lights up when in non-grid feed mode and indicates that it is ready to be put into operation. The display now indicates the current generator voltage. Optionally, you can carry out a quick start. You will find more details in the installation manual. To leave the parameter menu, press both buttons at once. The settings will be saved. Congratulations, you have now successfully completed the installation and the inverter can now be put into operation. You will find extra explanatory material in the inverter's comprehensive operational instruction guide.